guys, hi guys, hi guys, on it Tuesday, on it Tuesday, I'm so excited, I'm Looney, <laughs> and that's John, how are you John? Hi Looney, hi everyone, good to be with you this afternoon, and we've got a really shocking uh, program today. Why? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's all about <laughs> electric, electric circuits. Circuits, 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 my circuits. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys got that joke, because if you did it, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I haven't done physical sciences in so long, guys. I'm so excited to be here with you, grade 10s. So all you need to do is stay tuned and watch our show, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Remember to hit us up on Facebook, on facebook.com forward slash learn extra, and then on Twitter at learn extra, and you can download all the show notes, the videos, and check out our schedule on learn.mindset.co.za. And it's so cool. Our website is fun funky. And can we look at it? Do you want to show can them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Let's, it's so awesome, guys. Okay. Check it out. So it's been refreshed, made it, made to look a little bit newer, and uh, advertising some of the, the new stuff that we're doing. And if you want to get to Learn Extra, Learn Extra Live is here on the middle of the page. So we click on that, Learn More, or we can go to Learn Extra there, and we're on Learn Extra Live. And yeah, you see who the mindset of the month is, and that's all under Learn Extra. Learn Extra Live. Click on Learn Extra Live and give it a few seconds. Thank and there we go. And w what are these notes that you were talking about? Well, the show there notes. We go. And there's the, the whole schedule. Now, Lenny, what about if we've missed a c something from a previous month? What do we do then? You just check out the month that you want. Okay. So you go so back. So if you want so stuff even if from we want to go back to term one, yes, we can Feb. go term one click and on click Feb. on February. And voila. Yes. And what I mean, guys, I, I, I think I sometimes confuse you when I say the schedule. This is the schedule. Do you see that? Or please point, John. Just point. Yeah, that. All of that. So it tells you Monday yes. at 4 o'clock, Monday at 5 o'clock, Monday at 7. Yes. And when it goes red, then the video is there. Video. It means you can the watch the video. Is the video. There. Yes. When it's blue, get notes. Get notes. You can then get we the can notes. We can download them from, from this site. Yes. Now, the other thing is over here on today's show, these are, are, are gray at the moment. Yes, because it's live. We're still recording it. It's still happening. It hasn't been done yet. So that means that the video is, is not available. As soon as we're done, it will take some time, like 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, and then the video will be available. Okay, cool. Yes. So, guys, I think that's great. If you need to get your notes, and I really want to encourage you, get your notes. Because if you've got a chance to work through them, read them, Looney's going to post the quick link. So you don't have to go through this whole process. Quick link on Facebook, and it's going on Twitter as well. And if you haven't got a, um, a smartphone, or you're not sitting at a PC, then you can get for the feature phone, the view notes as well. Hey, that's right. Yes, that is right. And mindset is another thing. If you want to win yourself this awesome Casio calculator, the link is on our web on our on our Facebook page, sorry. And it's on our Facebook page with all the questions from the test yourself section from our notes. You fill everything in with your details, you click on the submit button and you'll stand a chance to win this Casio calculator. And remember entries close on Friday at twelve in the afternoon. So you have all the time in the world to enter this awesome ca competition. And congratulations to Gatla Homo for winning this calculator. Well done to you. Okay, I think it's time for me to take it away yes. now. Yes. So let me jump in there. Guys, um, Tracy wasn't feeling too well today. Everything's fine in case you're missing her. Um, baby's still okay. She was just getting a bit of a head cold and she wanted to take some time out. Um, but sh I'm sure she'll be back next week. So I just stepped in to talk to you about electric circuits. Now, electric circuits are really interesting and one of my favorite sections. So let's just go through what we're going to look at today. Uh, last week, we spoke to start to speak about a circuit, about current, and this thing called potential. So potential difference. Today, we're going to look at the following terms. We're going to define resistance. We're going to look very briefly at something called Ohm's law. And then the big part of what we're going to do today is compare parallel and series circuits and solve problems with these electric circuits. Guys, I can't stress this enough. Grade 10s, you can get a grounding in electric circuits this year. It will give you a huge step up all the way through grade 11 into grade 12. In fact, I would tell you now 
if you got some friends in grade 11 and grade 12, get them to watch as well. Get them to watch next week's lesson because th that will benefit them. There's so much that we can do in terms of grade 12 work, even starting now. The more you know it, the better you know it. Um, some of these questions could even come up later. So it's really about laying a foundation. And so here comes our challenge question. Challenge question, let's read it. So this is posted on Facebook already, right, Linny? Yes. And uh, we are saying the following. Megan and Peter are discussing what really happens inside a current-carrying conductor in a circuit. That's very important. Megan comments that electrons are emitted from the negative terminal of the battery and move from the battery to the light bulb so quickly that there is no time delay from when the switch is closed to when the light glows. Peter argues, no, 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 he's got a different idea. He says that the current is stronger before a resistor and weaker once it has passed through the resistor. Now what we're asked to do is analyze, okay? That means you've got to think about it, discuss it, see who's right, who's wrong. If they're both right, they might both be right, they might both be wrong. Analyze each of their statements and correct them where they are wrong. Now, that's really important. It helps you to think about your own ideas about what's happening in an electric circuit. Well, Looney, have you ever thought about it? You go and turn on the switch, mm -hmm. and almost straight away the light bulb comes on. Yes. Uh, and you wonder. Why is that? You wonder, eh? Yes. Okay, so that's a wonder question, and maybe we can wonder about it as we deal with the challenge question today. Okay. So, let's move on, and let's do a quick summary now. Now, there are three things that we've really got to deal with when we're dealing with electric circuits. We've got to know what current is. We've got to know what potential difference is. And we've got to have an idea about this thing called resistance. Now, I'm going to go through it quite quickly. You can look at it in your notes. We take that resistance is a measure of how hard it is for a current or a charge to pass through pa different parts of the circuit. So you can think of it as something pushing back on the, resistor, on the charges. Um, another way of thinking about it is if we imagine we're walking a race. We're walking around a circuit. And somewhere in the circuit there are little obstacles. Some of them are steep uphills and some of them are not so steep uphills. Uh, walking up the hill is like the resistor. It's how difficult it is, how much energy you've got to use to get across that barrier. Okay, So a re resistance slows down the flow of charge in a circuit. The unit we, uh, is called, the uh, SI unit is ohm, uh, with that funny omega sign. And what we've got to recognize is that these little charges, as they're moving in a circuit, being pushed by the battery, the battery or cells in the circuit are giving them energy to move around the circuit and they're, they're using up some of this energy when they get to a resistor. So on a microscopic level, it tells us, let's just take that, on a microscopic elect level, electrons moving through a conductor collide or interact with other particles of the conductor um, when they collide, they transfer kinetic energy, and the electrons therefore lose el energy. And uh, th they give off this energy, um, and that's what causes the light bulb to, to, um, to shine. Okay, now, there are two types of circuits. There's the series circuit, and there's the parallel circuit. And you can get combinations of them. Let's focus on the series circuit. Very important, there is only one path for the current to pass through that circuit. There's only one path for the current. The current is the same at every point in the circuit. This means that the charges at the beginning are moving at a certain rate, and they're moving at the same rate at the other end. It's like moving around on a... Uh, if you imagine for a minute... Um, your bicycle chain. It's got little links in it, and if we make a little circuit out of it and we turn the wheel, 
there's no part of that bicycle chain that is going slowly and another part is going fast. They're all moving at the same speed. Okay? Charges in a series circuit move at the same speed. Very important for us to note. Even when they're going through a resistor. They don't slow down when they go to a resistor. They use some of their stored energy so that they carry on moving at the same speed through that resistor. Now, we talk about voltage or potential difference. Voltage or potential difference is divided across the resistors when uh, they um, are in series. So voltage across the battery in a circuit is equal to the sum of the voltages across the series resistors. So we talk about potential difference across the battery is V1 plus V2 plus V3 if there were three, three resistors in the series circuit. This is telling us where energy is being used up where work is being done. And remember, that's not slowing down the charges. Charges are still moving at the same speed because they move constantly through the circuit. Now, the resistance uh, to the flow of, of charges increases uh, when we put more resistors together. So if we connect a whole lot of resistors, one after the other, then we're increasing the resistance. We're pushing hard against that. We're making the charges do more work. They're having to use up more energy. And so we say that the total resistance is just the sum of the resistors. Very, very important. This is for series circuits. Okay. Now what do we mean by parallel? So in parallel, we don't usually have a total parallel circuit. We have a parallel branch. So for example, we could have something like this and another resistor and those two are in parallel. Now why do I say they're in parallel? Because look, a little charge can come along here and it can either go through this circuit, part of the circuit, and out again, or another charge. Let's just do another one that's a different color. It can go along through here and it comes back, joins together. So I hope you can see that over here, that one went that way, one went that way, and over here, the one went that way, and the one went that way. Now, the number of charges that go through each resistor depends on the resistances. Now, here's an idea that I want you to think about. If you've got an easy route and a hard route, they're going to... They're going to um, an easy route and a hard route, you've got to come to a fork in the road and you've got to go one way or the other. Which way are you going to choose? Think about it this way. If you've got to go from point A to point B and there's a toll road where you've got to pay lots of money and there's a, a good road where you don't have to pay any money, where are the majority of people going to go? Well, that's not too difficult to decide. If the road is good, people will say, uh, more people will go on the non-toll road if the distance is the same. So that's what current or the charges do in a parallel section as well. The number of charges that pass through the smaller resistor is always bigger than the number of charges that pass through the bigger resistor. In other words, charges take the path of least resistance in a parallel section, majority of them. So let's have a look at what the notes say. There's more than one path, um, and we ensure that the current splits across the different paths, and they don't split in equal proportion. The, as I've just said to you, more charges go through the lower resistor, and less charges go through the higher resistor. But the potential difference, or the voltage measured by a voltmeter, across the resistors is the same. Very, very important. Across both the resistors, as well as across them individually, the voltage or potential difference across them stays the same. So we say that if we've only got a parallel section, then the voltage across the cells or the battery is equal to V1, is equal to V2, is equal to V3. So how do we cal calculate resistance here? Well, it's quite interesting, and it's one where lots of questions are asked. The resistance, when we put things in parallel, 
decreases. And we say 1 over the resistance in parallel is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Very important that you understand this. Now, last little thing that I want to mention, and we're not going to confirm it by experiment, we'll do that in grade 11, is this thing called Ohm's Law. And it's simply the relationship between potential current passing through a conductor and the potential difference. We say current and potential difference are directly proportional. And that means that if you double the one, you double the other. So if we take a, a, um, a quotient of them, V over I, that will give you a constant. And that's what resistance is. Just remember that we can always measure current and potential difference in terms of these equations. Uh, current is I uh, is equal to Q over T, and V, the potential difference or voltage, is the work done per unit charge. Okay, that's about all that you need to know to solve even the most difficult of circuit problems for grade 10, and I would even guess most of the grade 11 ones as well. So let's go for a little break. And after this, we'll dive into some circuit problems. All right. Mindsetters, we are going to take a very quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that break. I hope you guys are still enjoying the show. We are doing electric circuits. So, John... Thanks, Looney. Now, guys, let's have a quick look at the Facebook page. What Looney's been looking at, and she's been chatting up. Some of you are posting questions. Some of you are saying you can't see the challenge question. I just want to show you that it's right at the top of the page. It's always pinned to the top. You can see that little yellow thing there. There's the grade 10 challenge question about Megan and Peter. Go and have a look at it. Go and find it. Okay, then the next thing that I see is that there's some, some great responses already so when you want to give your answer uh, to that challenge question, please just fill it in over here. Write a comment and type it in so that you've got your, your answer to the challenge question. So we've got quite a few already. And then the last thing that I just wanted to mention is, have you noticed, Looney? Look at this. Seven, eight, oh. six, eight, seven. Mm -hmm. Seven, eight, six, seven. Hey, that looks to me like it's getting close That's to... That's 323 more. Hey, uh, to 79. But I'm thinking of 80. Oh, oh hey, okay, okay. What about 80,000? Yes, yes, yes. Guys, what do you think we should do for 80,000 likes on the page? Uh, give us some ideas. Yes. So will you post something about when are we going to get to 80,000? Okay. Let's, let's, let's get some excitement going. Share the page. Share the notes. Get your friends working. And guys, we've got a really interesting thing coming up. So don't you go away. We're here to support you all the way through the year. Yes. And we want to see our family grow. We want to help more learners. We don't want to listen to the news about bad maths and science marks. No, we want to get the best maths and science marks ever. Isn't that right, Looney? Yes. Hey, for sure. So how can we do it? Get your friends to watch Learn Extra. Get the notes. Study the questions. Do the work. And you can be sure that you will get better marks. Okay, so let's get up going now. Talking about better marks, here's an exam type question. I love June exams. I love end of year exams. Don't like invigilation, and I don't really enjoy the marking, but uh, setting the questions and seeing how people answer them, that's great fun. So let's go through it. We're told, in this question, I'm going to show you how to do with an exam question. We told the following things. Three resistors. Read the question carefully. And they tell you it's a 5 ohm, an 8 ohm, and a 2 ohm. Are connected in series in a circuit with a 24 volt battery. An ammeter is also connected to measure the current in the circuit. Now, I'm not even going to start to uh, read the rest of the question because I've got to take this information. And when I get a question like this and I'm going to do a circuit question, I must draw a picture. I've told you lots of times. 
And you will have heard me if you've listened to grade 11 or grade 12. When you get a physics question, draw a picture. And when you get a, a circuit diagram, a circuit question, you draw the circuit diagram. So I'm going to draw it quickly. So we've got a battery. Now remember, when you draw the battery, we must draw more than one cell in it. It could be a few more. And I'm just going to put them dot, dot, dot. By the way, do you remember that the side that is longer is the positive end, the side that is shorter is the negative end, because it takes more ink to draw a long stroke than a short stroke, it takes more ink to draw a plus than a minus. So that's how you can remember it. Then we go that we are going to connect these in series. And we're going to put a resistor over there, another resistor over there, and another resistor over there. And guys, those are in one path. I could then push the path over here. Doesn't really, they don't have to be in straight line. As long as you take your finger and you draw them in a straight, it's one path. Okay? Very, very important. Then the other thing that it said here, it said that it's connected to 24 volt battery. So I better put that in. We're going to say the reason that we know it's a 24 volt battery is that we measure the, the potential difference across the battery using a voltmeter. And a voltmeter is always connected in parallel. Okay? Whereas the current is measured with an ammeter that's connected in series. The reason for that is that the current or the ammeter is a low resistance instrument. It wants to measure all the current passing through it. So it, it measures, it's like measuring the traffic. It counts the traffic without stopping it. The voltmeter is measuring the energy before and the energy after. Now, let's fill in the detail on the circuit. It wasn't required, but 5, 8, and 2. So we're going to put here, we're going to call this one R1. And we're going to say it's 5 ohms. And then this one we're going to call R2, and we're going to call it uh, 8 ohms. And this one is R3, and it was 2 ohms. I think 5, 8, and 2 was correct. And now I've got all the information from that point, and I've put it in. So, what's the first question? It says, calculate the total resistors, the resistance offered by these resistors. Now, let's have a look at the circuit. And here's something that I want you to see. And I just want to, to lock everything that I've drawn there. So just give me a second. I want to um, group it. And then I'm going to lock it into position so I can draw on top of this and erase it when I need to. So what I want you to see, series means that if I start at one point, let's use this lovely color, this blue color here. I start at the positive, and I go all the way through. I go through resistor 1, then through resistor 2, then through resistor 3, then through the ammeter, and back. Now, I want to emphasize something. As I'm going through, I'm having to do some work. I'm having to use up energy. If I want to know the total resistance, I've got to take this resistor, plus that resistor, Plus that resistor. Because I went through the current, the little charge, passed through all three resistors. And how do we do that? Not difficult. We're going to say to ourselves that the... Oh, let's not use that. We're going to say the total resistance is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay. R1 was 5 ohms, R2 was 8 ohms, and R3 was 2 ohms. And so you don't even need a calculator to do that. 8 and 2 is 10, and 5 is 15. And we automatically recognize that that's 15 ohms. Please make sure you put the units in your answer. It's not essential that you put them in when you substitute, but it's better it's certainly important when you put them through in the answer. Now, the next part of the question. We need to calculate the current passing through the ammeter. 
Now, let's have a look at what we've done. I've indicated the path of the current with the blue arrow. The reason we've said previously, conventional current, the direction of current is given by a convention. A convention is a rule. Now, Looney, here's the, the type of rule that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, when you see a red light, what does that mean? Stop. So, who decided that red means stop? I don't know, actually. Actually, you see? Yeah. Huh? Mm. But when you see a green light, what does that mean? Go. <laughs> okay. So, some... Uh, hey, what does a pink light mean? Nothing. Ah. <laughs> so, you, so, guys, I hope you can see that, that we have attached meaning mm. to different things. And so, we've said red doesn't really mean stop. But in our heads... Everyone has agreed that if you see a red light and you're driving in a car, you must stop. Unless you're a taxi driver. They oh, that's a different we story, hey? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they didn't get the rule book. <sighs> okay. But guys, we've got the rule book. And for electric current, what we've been told is that the scientists have decided that the direction of the current is the movement of positive charge from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So it's in this direction. That is called conventional current. Okay. And the current continues through the battery and it completes the circuit. In that direction. Now, what I want you to understand is that wherever I've got a blue, if I moved this, there's only one path. This ammeter, I could have put it over here. Or I could have put it between the, the resistors. Or the, between that resistor. Or after that resistor. Guys, doesn't matter where I put it. The ammeter would read the same. Because the current in a series circuit is constant. Remember the bicycle chain. We spoke about the bicycle chain. As the one part moves, the other part moves at the same speed. It doesn't go quicker and slower. If you pedal faster, you give it more energy. Like the, if you put more batteries in, you give them, then it will go faster, yes. But if you're just going slowly along, then it will go at the same speed. Okay. Doesn't change. So the ammeter reading will be the same. Doesn't matter where we do it. How are we going to work out the reading on the ammeter? Now, ammeter reading is the current. Now, remember there are two formula that have I in them. There's I is equal to Q over T. We haven't been told anything about charge. And the other one is this one, the Ohm's law equation. R is equal to V over I. Now, we, because we haven't been told anything about charge and time, we can ignore that. What we do know is we can start to look at this one. What we're looking for is the total current in the circuit. There's only one current. It's the total current. So we must use the total potential difference or total voltage. And we must use the total resistance. And so that's why we're going to do just that. We're going to take that 15 ohms. And we're going to take the 27 volts. 24 volts, sorry, 24 volts, that one there, which was the potential from the battery. And we're going to substitute that, and we're going to say, well, what's I? Now, notice I put down the formula in the form that it is being given to me on the data sheet. R is equal to V over I. I haven't fiddled with it. I haven't fussed with it. Written it down just like that. Now I can get marks for substitution, and now I can change and solve for I. And I can say... So I know that I is going to be 24 divided by 15. Okay. I'm going to need the calculator for this. So let's pull it up. And we're going to say to ourselves, let's look at the calculator. Get the calculator. 24 divided by 15 gives me my current, which is 1,6 amps or amperes. Now don't write... 1,6 and something. Just write 1,6A. 
the symbol A is the correct symbol. The number of learners that write A and P S, you're going to get, lose a mark. Don't do that. Just write A, or like the ohm, write the omega sign, or V for volt. Okay, so be very careful of that. We've answered that part of the question. So that was question B. We've done question A, we've done question B. Let's see if we've got time for question C. Now, question C, calculate the potential difference across each resistor. Now guys, this is not difficult. Because we know the current and we know the resistance. So we just need the potential difference. But what I want to show you here is the way to set it out. So we want potential difference. And I'm going to change my rule a little bit. And I'm going to say, I want to get V. I want to get V. And I want V of the first resistor, resistor 1. Now, V is equal to I of the current passing through resistor 1 times the R, the resistance of resistor 1. Now, I've written it as V is equal to I times R. This is not on the data sheet, but I just find it easier to remember that and to do the substitution. So I have broken my rule, but what I want you to concentrate on is that I've specified these subscripts. And if you wanted to, you could even do it simpler. You could say, V, I want the potential difference, not of R1, but I want it of the 5 ohm resistor. So there's nothing wrong with saying, I want the potential difference of the 5 ohm resistor. I want the current of the 5 ohm resistor. I want the resistance of the 5 ohm resistor. Because that's the only thing I'm looking at at the moment. And that looks like a horrible 5. So let me just correct it for a minute and put it in over here. So now, what was the current passing through the 5 ohm resistor? Remember, current in the series circuit is constant. So the current was 1,6. It was the same everywhere in the circuit, 1,6 amps. What's the resistance of the 5 ohm resistor? No, you say that's being silly. Of course, it's 5 ohms. It can only be that. So if we calculate the potential difference now, it's 1,6 multiplied by 5, which is going to give us 8 volts. Now, let's do it again for the second resistor, the 2 ohm resistor. The current is again going to be the current in the 2 ohm resistor, the resistance of the 2 ohm resistor. You're telling the examiner exactly what you're doing. What's the current in the 2 ohm resistor? It's constant. It's the same. It's 1,6 times the resistance, 2, 2 ohms. And that gives us 3,2 volts. Okay. Now, let's do the last one. Because that was the 2 ohm, which happened to be a 3. Let's do the, the 8 ohm now. Okay. So we're going to do the potential difference of the 8 ohm resistor is equal to the current through the 8 ohm resistor. And guys, this is getting a little bit repeti repetitious, but I hope you can see where we're getting all the data from. The current was 1,6 because current is constant. 8 because of that. And now let's do the multiplication and use the calculator to do that. 1,6 multiplied by 8 equals and 12,8. Now, volts. What I want you to notice, if I can get them all on one page, is notice the 5 ohm had 8 volts. The 8 ohm had 12 volts, 12,8, almost 13 volts. The 2 ohm only had 3,5, so 3,2. Notice something. The bigger the resistor, the bigger the potential difference. Second thing, if I take... And I haven't even done this, but I'm going to check it now on the calculator. If I take that value, that value, and that value, and I add them up, what do you think we'll get? Let's have a look. 12,8 plus 8 plus 3,2. 24 volts. And what can we say? V1 plus V2 plus V3 
is equal to V total across the battery, which is 24. So we can check ourselves. We can make sure that we've got the right reading. Now, one last thing for you to think about is question D. Let's see if we've done it. The total potential difference uh, relative to the sum of the individual potential differences across the resistors. We've just done it. We've added them up. We've seen that they add up to the total, which is 24. So that's an excellent exam question. We're going to take a break now. And after the break, we'll come back to discuss the challenge question. And if there's time, we'll do the second question or we'll take some of your questions as well. All right. Mindsetters, a lot of you are asking me, how do you stand a chance to win this Casio calculator? All you need to do, when I posted the link to welcome guys to the show, all of that, you see there's a lot of links there. There's download, there's you, and then there's test yourself. You click on that link, and then it will take you to a... a form. What, do, what do you call it's that? A Google a form. Yes, a Google form. Then you fill in all your details. Then you answer the questions. The questions are on the form as well, because they're on the notes and on the form. You answer the questions. Fill in everything, everything, everything. All the it's not questions. Difficult it's though, not It's, it's just not. your name. A contact number and email address if you've got them and then you just have to click a b c or yes. fill in a short question most of them are multiple choice guys so it's very simple you submit your entry and then we pick winners according to your answers and all of that stuff so that's how you win this casio calculator so with that said i hope you guys are clear on the competition let's take a very quick break and i'll see you straight after this Welcome back, Mindsetters. From that break, it's now time for the challenge question. So, John. Hi, Lily. <laughs> Hi, guys. I hope you've got some of your thinking caps on about the challenge question. I hope you've been listening as well as we've been explaining it. Because I think you'll be able to see that both Peter and Megan have made some mistakes. So, they're discussing what really happens inside a current carrying conductor. So that's what they're worried about. So let's first of all recognize that we've got a circuit. I'd like to draw the little circuit. Two cells and a circuit. And we know there's at least one resistor. But I'm going to put two resistors. And we're going to say to ourselves, that's what the circuit looks like. Now, Megan says the following. That electrons... Ah, remember, electrons are negatively charged, are emitted from the negative terminal of the battery, and move from the battery to the light bulb so quickly that there is no time delay from when the switch is closed to when the light glows. Okay, so first of all, I've got something wrong, and I just want to change it. I want to put in the light bulb. So, this symbol for the light bulb is a circle with an X in it. So let's do that. So Megan says the following. Over here we've got a little electron. And over here we've got another one. And what she's saying is for some reason when you close the switch what happens is that this little electron moves from there and it moves all the way around there to the light bulb where it makes the light glow. And it happens very, very quickly. Now, is she right or is she wrong? Well, let's check it. The first thing that we need to understand is this part. That electrons in a circuit move from the negative terminal of the battery. That part. And you know what? Megan's right. In copper wires, in any metal wire, we talk about conventional current as the movement of positive charge. But at the same time, as we think there are positive charges, or the way a positive charge would move if it could move, in the opposite direction are the actual movement of electrons. Now this is quite difficult, but the only way that I can kind of explain it to you is this. That if we know that in a sample of a metal. We've got little positive kernels in the metal, little positive regions. OK? 
Okay? These are the copper atoms. And around them, we've got lots of electrons. But before I put in the electrons, I want to just group that together and lock it down because I might need to erase over it. So I'm going to put some electrons. And I'm going to put an electron there and an electron there and an electron there, a couple of them. And what we know, even though I'm not drawing them all in, is these positive charges, there are positive charges here, and the number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges. And please forgive me for not drawing all the positive charges and all the negative charges, but I just want to recognize that there are positive and negative charges. And we'll try and get the same number, more or less. Okay, so that's what a conductor looks like before we connect a battery to it. Now, what I need you to understand in a metal is that those outer electrons, particularly for something like copper, those are far away from the nucleus. The inner electrons and the core are tightly held. So they become a positive center. But the other ones, they drift. And this electron that was perhaps part of this atom can drift all the way over there and this one can drift that way. They can move randomly. And these little kernels are vibrating as well because it's not very cold uh, under normal conditions. And so there's a drifting of electrons. Now what happens if we put a battery and we put a positive charge there and we put a negative charge there? What do you think is going to happen? Well, the negatives are going to be attracted to the positive of terminal and the positives, hey, they, they can't move. They're too big. They're too heavy. They, they're stuck in their chemical bond. But if they could move, they would go to the negatives. So I want you to focus on this little charge over here. This one over here. I'm going to focus on this one for a minute. And what I want you to understand is that that positive battery pulls away an electron. So it takes that electron and it moves it away. And let's just say it takes that one and moves it away. Now what have I got? I've got a little region that around that pink area is positive. I want to show you that the electrons were pulled in that direction. From the negative towards the positive. Now, what do you think is going to happen in this little region that is positive? Well, immediately that little region is positive. What I think will happen is that this electron that's sitting there is going to be pulled towards it. And this electron that's sitting there, and oh, there, there are too many of them, some of these are going to perhaps be pulled towards that one. And at the same time, if that happens, then this region of space is going to become positive. And so I'm noting that that region now, the first region, is neutral, positive or negatives. But this one has got a diminished charge. It hasn't got so many electrons. Now, guys, this happens very quickly. But what can you see? What direction has the pink thing traveled in? Ah, oh, it's traveled in that way. Did the actual positives move? No, they didn't. They stayed stationary. That one is still there. And so on. It would have a chain effect. So what I want you to understand is that Megan is not right about two things. The first thing that she is right about is, yes, it is the movement of electrons. That is not conventional current. That's not the direction of current. But electrons do move. That's true. But the second part, it says they move from the battery to the light bulb so quickly that there's no time delay. No, that's not true. The individual electron will just move a little bit. So it will move from the negative charge onto that first one. But it, it's like a bumping session. So as what happens to the one, it happens to the next and moves on. And that happens very quickly. So the electrons that are in the light bulb actually get pushed through. Okay? The ones that at the start, it's like a little, it's like a, a lining up at the fairground. If you've ever gone to a fairground like Gold Reef City, you stand, as soon as the cars come along, people jump into the cars and then the, ca the cars go away. The next group go along. So then the line continually moves. And that's exactly what's happening here. The movement of electrons 
is continuous. But it's not this little electron that actually goes through the light bulb. This one moves that way. This one jumps off and moves through the light bulb. Okay. So you need to understand that that's a very important thing. And in fact, it happens incredibly quickly. Um, and there is a lot more to this question than we're prepared to discuss uh, for grade 10 level. So when you turn on the light bulb, or you turn on the switch, Lenny, tonight, and you're going to the bathroom, just think, you're causing a chain reaction. Mm. Okay, you turn on the switch, you close the circuit, but you're not sending something through the wires. Okay, it's just a little bump that bumps the electrons, and they gain energy, and they then the light bulb glows up. Okay, good. Now what about Peter? Oh, Peter didn't listen. He, he was dozing in class, I can see that. He argues that the current is stronger before the resistor and weaker once it has passed through. No, 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 Peter. Particularly here, this is false. Okay? What we do know is the current in a series circuit, because this is series, the current is constant. And if the current is constant, it doesn't matter where we go, over here, or over here, or over here, or over here, that will be the same current. They're moving the same. But what we will say is that before the resistor, over here, they have high potential, they have high energy. But oh, after, the, after the resistor, they've lost a little bit of energy. Where did that energy go? It went into working through that resistor. That might be heating up. And then on the other side of the, um, of the light bulb, they've lost some more energy. And so there's energy changes. And that's where we get potential difference. We can mark these energy changes and say between two points, between the, the green point and the yellow point, there will be a potential energy difference. And between the yellow and the orange, there's potential energy change. And if we added those up, that would be the same as going from green to orange. Potential energy is changing through the circuit. Okay, so we've analyzed it. We've said what's wrong with Peter's statement. We've said what's wrong with, with Megan's statement. I hope you got some of those things right. Now, Looney, are there yes. any questions? Yes, Let's we get to, I saw there were a couple. Quite uh, a lot. And there are a few that I'd like to answer. Okay. So you give them to me. This is from Kingsley Wright. How do you calculate the electric motive force of the circuit if there are no values across the terminals of the batteries? Is there a, form a formula for it, or can you just calculate it using the current and resistance? Exactly. So... There's this word called EMF, okay? EMF stands for the total potential of the battery. We can write it differently by saying it's V total or V battery, okay? Now, at grade 10 level, all we're worried about is if you take a look at a little cell, and on the side of the cell, it will actually tell you what the total potential is. It will say this is 1,5 volt battery. Now, that little 1,5 is the EMF. Okay? We put two of those together, 1,5 plus 1,5 will give you 3 volts. Four, three of them, 4,5. Four of them, 6 volts. Now, what I need you to understand about that is that because it's the total, we can either add up the individual cells, add up cells, or we're going to use the only other formula that we know, and that's the V total is equal to the I total times the R total. Okay, so if you can get the current, or you've been given the reading of the ammeter, then you put that in. If it's series, one ammeter reading would be okay. And this one would be the total of the resistors if there was more than one resistor. Okay. All right. And then from Dumelo. we're oh, almost we out, eh? mm. Aren't we? Okay. okay, one more question. <laughs> is it true that more resistors offer less resistance? Sorry, just say that. Is it true that more resistors offer less resistance? Okay, that's a very good question. 
Uh, it's not true if they're in series. If they're in series, then we're just adding them up. So if they're like that, then, then they're not. But if they're in parallel, which unfortunately we didn't get to, if they're drawn like this, and we have more of those, then the total of this circuit in parallel will be smaller than the smallest one. The total will be, smallest, be, be less than the smallest one. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get time for that. We'll put it into next week's lesson. All right. Mindsetters, we thank you so, so much for tuning in. John, thank you for the lesson. And I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Goodbye.